Hello and thank you for joining us for another edition of the fifth quarter. The Pacifica Mariners are looking to revive their 1-2 preseason record with a win against the Westminster Lions. Out to Bolsa Grande Stadium we go where the Mariner marching band looks ship -shape. First quarter, a short screen pass from Kyle Edwards to Ryan Trader puts Pacifica on the scoreboard. Mariners lead 7-0. The defense from both teams would make this game a low-scoring affair until a Pacifica interception from Jeremy Lawrence leads to a field goal and a 10-0 halftime lead. Fans of all ages enjoyed the Pacifica halftime show. Third quarter, after getting sacked in the backfield, Westminster quarterback Dominic Pendergrass keeps the ball for a two-yard touchdown. The score puts the Lions within three points of the lead. Westminster defense stops another Pacifica drive but the Mariners settle for a field goal and extend their lead 13-7. Fourth quarter, the Mariners add some pain to the score, recovering their onside kick. Just two plays later, the Mariners break loose Michael Garris for a 27-yard touchdown run. Pacifica has a bit of breathing room with a 19-7 lead. With less than two minutes remaining in the contest, a Westminster drive is broken up by a Bradley Odell interception. The Mariners go on to win it 19-7. We saw some things tonight like our running game that we hadn't seen uh, in previous weeks, so that was a huge. Our defense really stepped up. We tackled very well. We got turnovers. Offense did really well. No turnovers as well. We did the basics right and we came out with the W. Next week, Pacifica takes on league rival Kennedy High School in an Empire League matchup. Preseason hasn't been too kind to Garden Grove High School, especially in the past few weeks. They've dropped three in a row to put them one and three overall on the season. Garden Grove League play starts next week, but first, they have one more non-league game here at home against El Toro High School. First quarter, after blocking a Garden Grove punt, El Toro recovers on the Argo 17. It takes a few plays, but they score on this run by Jacob Fernari. Seven to nothing, Chargers. Later in the first, Charger quarterback Connor Manning slings the ball to Cody White who makes the grab in the end zone. 14 to nothing Chargers. With El Toro leading 28 to nothing late in the second quarter, the Argonauts make a push with this long run by quarterback Chris Martinez. However, the Argos could not capitalize. Garden Grove cheerleaders and their younger companions kept the crowd upbeat despite the Argos trailing at halftime. Despite a large deficit in the fourth quarter, the Argos are determined to score. Backup quarterback Randy Osario hits wide receiver Gabriel Carrillo for the completion. CJ Del Real ensures that the Argos would not be shut out when he takes the handoff and runs 70 yards for the late game touchdown. Final score at Garden Grove High School, Chargers 42, Argos 7. And now here is Kyla Javier with more highlights, including the Rancho versus Pioneer matchup. Thanks, Christian. I'm here with Rancho Alamitos, who's coming off of their first loss of the season last week, losing by only a field goal. This put their record at 3-1. But tonight they play Pioneer High School, whose record is 0-4, and they have 59 points on the season. This could be just the game for the Vaqueros to pick up that momentum to start league. Rancho's on the road again at Pioneer High School, and their cheerleaders are fired up. With no score in the first quarter, Rancho gets on the board first. Watch this fake handoff to Kevin Duquette by Lincoln Falatoy, who keeps it and runs for a 50-yard touchdown. 7-0, Vaqueros. Pioneer answers in a similar fashion when quarterback Ruben Robles keeps the ball for an 11-yard touchdown. Score, 7-7. In this next Vaquero drive, it takes one play and one handoff to Brett Hurley for him to motor downfield and into the end zone for a 75-yard touchdown run. Score, 14-7, Rancho. But the Vaqueros aren't done, and kicker Jose Valenzuela completes a 40-yard field goal to make it 17-7 Rancho. During halftime, the Titans had their homecoming ceremony complete with a grand finale. The score remains 17-7 going into the fourth quarter, and Rancho manages to get one last touchdown before the game ends with the handoff to Brett Hurley. He had 205 yards rushing on the night. Final score, 23-7 Vaqueros. Rancho defense held the Titans to only one touchdown and Kevin Duquette had some key stops. We've, we've worked around our defense and our offense and we've worked things out as a team and stuff and it's really helped a lot. Coach Mike Enright is ready for league next week when they play Bolsa Grande. You know, we just wanted to get momentum going into league like we always do. I mean, last year we went 0-5 and ended up going 4-1. This year we're 4-1 and everybody's 0-0 next week. So. Now let's check out Bolsa Grande versus Calvary Chapel. 
Third quarter starts with the Matadors in control 14-7. Michael Marquez runs up the middle and appears to be stopped, but the second effort puts the ball in the end zone. Matadors 21, Eagles 7. Fourth quarter with the Eagles barely hanging on. Quarterback Colin Kieran rolls to his right and fires a pass to Tyler Racuglia, who cradles the ball for the touchdown reception. 21-14 Matadors. Later in the fourth, Kieran picks up a low snap and rolls to his right and once again finds Racuglia, who scores the touchdown. The extra point ties the game up at 21. Bolsa marches downfield with time expiring and no timeouts left. Marquez runs the ball to the Eagles' one-yard line. The Matadors frantically try to get back to the line of scrimmage and spike the ball to stop the clock, but are too late. It's on to overtime. Eagles win the toss and Bolsa will get the ball first. The two teams are unsuccessful on their first attempts until this play by the Eagles. Kieran drops back and fires deep to Billy Weaver who hauls in the pass to stay in bounds and score. 28 to 21 Eagles. Matadors need to score to stay alive. On the seven yard line, Elias Hernandez does just that as he rumbles through the middle for the clutch touchdown. The Matadors decide to go all or nothing as they go for the two point conversion to win it. Hernandez runs up the middle again and delivers with the game-winning score. The Matadors win a thriller for their second win in a row, 28 to 27. And now back to Kyla Javier for some action from Santiago and La Quinta's games. At Bolsa Grande Stadium, the La Quinta Aztecs host the Saddleback Roadrunners. The Aztecs waste no time getting down to business in this contest. Don Tran passes to Darren Nguyen, he puts on a move, gets a block, and he's in the end zone, 7 to 0 La Quinta. Still first quarter, Don Tran finds Vin Ha over the middle and he flies over the goal line for the 25-yard score, 14-0 Aztecs. When the Roadrunners punt, Darren Nguyen receives and runs it all the way to the two-yard line. Then Don Tran keeps it and the Aztecs are up 21-10 in the first quarter. La Quinta scored 28 in the first quarter and 14 in the third to win the game 42-0. Don Tran had 140 yards passing and 75 yards rushing. Let's check in on our last game of the night with the Santiago Cavaliers. At Glover Field in Anaheim, the Cavaliers take on the Anaheim colonists on their home field. We join this game in the third quarter. Anaheim leads 35-7. Colonist quarterback Anthony Covarrubias is deceptive. He fakes a handoff and runs around the right side for the score. With the point, Anaheim leads 42-7. Fourth quarter now, Richard Sagastumi facing fourth down and four yards to go, looks to pass, then tucks the ball and gets the first. Then Sagastumi on another fourth down finds Armando Silva over the middle for another clutch first down. With less than a minute on the clock, Santiago looks at fourth down and seven to go on the colonist's eight yard line. Sagastumi connects with David Pelagio to score the touchdown. Final score, colonist 45, Cavaliers 13. Santiago faces La Quinta in their first league matchup next week. For Christian Hartnett, I'm Kyla Javier for the fifth quarter.